Hello, 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 everybody, um, and welcome to kind of a special episode of the Choker Bros. Um, I'm Sam Riley, or also known as Samson Knight Prime, which is one of the questions that we're going to answer. Uh, I'll, I'll allow these uh, two fine gentlemen to introduce themselves, starting with Cody. Uh, I am Cody Snodgrass. Uh, Adam Lane, one half of the RV Returners. One half of the RV Returners. Uh, Chris Adams being the other half, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, cool. All right, anyway, so basically, um, I, I asked for some help from these two uh, gentlemen to answer some of these questions uh, dealing with the uh, Kansas Cup. I don't think that I'll have all the answers, um, so their help is much appreciated. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, we have not planned this out. I just asked for their help about five minutes ago, um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna wing it. All right. Um, so let's let's get started. What's our first question? Uh. First one is, why are you a Transformer? Okay. All right. So I go by Samsonite Prime on Facebook um, because it was a way for me to, like, interact with my students back when I was teaching high school uh, two years ago. Um, I was known as Mr. Prime because the photography staff that came in to take the school uh, school photos, um, they let me choose any name. They're like, oh, well, what's your name? And I just said can I use any name? And I was thinking like, I don't know if I want to use Michael or Sam because it's my first, my last name. Though you can use any name you want. I said, okay, then I will be Optimus Prime. And so that's just how it was. I remember walking by one day, the principal just looked at my name tag and he just laughed. And so I just kept it. <laughs> so I eventually just changed my Facebook name to that. And I don't know, it, it's been great for keeping like, like stalkers, girlfriends away, you know, ex-girlfriends. So <laughs> they can't stalk me. It's great. <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway, so let's just move on. So, uh, uh, Cody, you had asked a question. What is Sarah's power? Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. The question was, what is Sarah's power in Thought of Mage, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Sarah's. Right. How much power does Sarah have? How much okay. power does Thought Maturge have when your opponent has three cards in hand? <laughs> and what does Duke Lard do? Okay, and great. One more, but we'll, just, we'll just go one at a time. <laughs> okay, great. So, this question stems from uh, my top eight match. Uh, oh no, top four match, right? Top four match, yeah. top four match yeah. against Cody, um, in which game one, and, and you guys will read his tournament report, it'll be much more in depth than mine because I don't remember much, but game game one, he, he slaughtered me. 7 0? Yeah. Okay. Um, game What's two, yeah, game two, uh, 7 0, was that right? I, I 7 0'd yep. you, yeah, so yeah. I, was, yeah. I was feeling good. Um, I'm going to talk about that mindset too a little bit. Um, and then game three, um, Cody started out with like a, a like a, a decent amount of discard, uh, very early. I think you had three thaumaturges, right? Uh, yeah, I one drew Sarah. Them. I drew them every every turn. I drew a thaumaturge and another card, yeah. like one after another. All right, yeah. So I'm slowly picking at your hand. Right, and so when I originally Zach had told me he's on the he thought that you were on the, like the the turbo discard version. Um, and then after looking at your list, it, it was definitely less discard than the turbo discard. Like you had, you didn't have as many Argas as many Sarahs. Um, no, yeah, not like the Singapore list. I right, but playing. but I guess against Zach, it seemed like you just turbo discarded him out, right? Yeah, game one, uh, he seven owed me pretty pretty quickly. Uh, game two, I opened, I think I opened Argath Thaumaturge and seven owed him, and then game three, I opened pretty heavy discard as well. Right. So in game three against you, what, what had happened was uh, you had slowly played these thaumaturges, um, and Sarah is getting cards out, and I had just I prioritized getting down to two backups. I needed two backups right away, um, yeah. and then I finally landed a Dataluma. <laughs> and so what yeah. happened is, is you know, you you seeing that, that I had no cards in hand, you just kept party attacking right into my Dataluma. Right. Um, yeah. There was a point in the game where I had realized that. This was just going to be a continual pattern, and so I actually decided to stop playing cards or stop trying to resolve cards so that I could just build my hand up. Uh, because I, when I realized that you weren't on the turbo discard, um, I knew you had used so many cards already that discarded cards from my hand that you couldn't actually have that many more. Right, yeah. <laughs> so you would kept party attacking, and there was this awkward time where I'd finally got to three cards in my hand. Yeah. And you party attacked again with Amitage and Sarah into my Dataluma. Um, yeah. And I had with... a Cactar on board. So I was, a I was able to block your 7k total guys, right? 
Then yeah. 4K, another Thaumaturge. And then Cactar, another Thaumaturge. And that was pretty uh, brutal. I think you waited until the next turn to Cactar the Thaumaturge, because yeah. otherwise that would have died. Uh, uh, well, no, it was a 1K, so I could just ping it. But uh, yeah. But yeah. regardless, yeah. I, uh, I, I had three on taps CP. And a Duke Log. Log. Duke Log just, I'm reading it over and over again in my hand, and I'm just pretending it's on the field, I think. Yeah. And I just swung blindly right into it. So. Right, yeah. And then there was a there was a turn later on, right, where um, you attacked your Genesis. Well, either you attacked in, with your Genesis into my Data Luma, or I attacked my Data Luma into your Genesis. Either way, they were both 8Ks at the time. But yeah, I, I but I so. <clears throat> but I had Archer up, um, right, which led to a really awkward time when I archered your your Duke Larg. Yeah, um, my third one too. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so it happens. It happens. Um, and that's that's the thing. I think that a lot of people are gonna they're gonna worry about like the at least Mono Ice are gonna worry about this matchup. What do you, how did you feel about the matchup? Like, what were you what were your thoughts on the matchup? Uh, so before I even left for Kansas, I was trying to figure out what the top list was because I saw Josh Guz in Singapore. I didn't see yeah. the actual list, but I saw him play it. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't really figure out, I don't know, I couldn't figure out how the deck really worked. Like, I understood the concept, but I couldn't get the list right. Right. So I was most worried about that deck going into it. And then obviously, after we saw the top 16 list, I knew Zach was on it because yeah. uh, he, he sat next to me round one. So I was like, all right, hopefully I just don't have to play him. I'm sure him and Sam are on the same deck. So, yep. Yeah. Um, after playing it, how, how do you feel about the matchup? Um, I feel like it's a, it's pretty much like, I feel like it's a 50-50 game See. as long as you have a good pilot behind each deck. See, it's funny uh, you say that because I feel exactly the same. I feel like the matchup is very, very close. Oh, yeah. Um, absolutely. And the you know the like I think that it's I it's kind of ironic that my understanding is that like Zach didn't necessarily wouldn't have necessarily beat you but he definitely made a misplay that that gave him um, the loss um, and the same thing like your your misplay cost you possibly the match for sure um, yeah so it does make me think that it's it is a very close matchup and for those people going into the SoCal. Uh, Crystal Cup should not should not uh, worry like too much about. I, I, in my opinion, this matchup. If you're really if you're really well versed on your your mono ice deck, you'll probably be fine. Yeah, I, I lost Earthwind as well in top sixteen. Yeah, you lost to Aaron Weisman's list, right? Y yeah, which I thought was was okay because uh, I was like, there's no Dot Illumina Cactuar in there, so like, how's he gonna deal with my Cobalt Droids? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It turned out Yastola is a pain, man. Like three drop Legendary Yastola shut me out. Of both games that I lost, yeah, it, it was rough. Uh, ironically, she's also the best card in the mirror, probably, and not too bad against ice. Um, obviously, she's not great, right, Cody? But she's like fine. Um, yeah, I mean, she stops the Zalera, which is kind of a big deal. But it, I mean, most right. of the time, I most of the time I only really need Zalera for Cam. Um, but when she comes down, follow, like the following turn after a Cam comes down. That kind of complicates things. So I basically just, hopefully I draw Vayne or... Yeah. Anyway, all right. So anyway, we'll, we'll move on from that uh, that Mono Ice matchup. I got way more to talk about that later, actually. Um, so <laughs> uh, did any card underperform for you? I'll actually talk about my deck first, and I want to hear about your guys' decks too. Um, my deck was pretty simple. I think that the Psycom Enforcer underperformed for me because I didn't play against all those monster decks. Um, going into the... The event, I was very certain that the monster deck um, is probably the best deck. Um, it probably loses... Pre it is very much rock, paper, scissors. It probably loses pretty hard to Mono Ice, it seemed. Um, but it, it beats the crap out of Earthwind. So I had played two Psycom Enforcers, and that card just did nothing for me up until round 7. Where it was, like, pretty fine. It killed a dragon, but I could have been fine. Actually, I, I, to be fair, it also dealt 6 points of damage. But the card could have been anything and would have dealt those same six points of damage, probably. But yeah, well, uh, what about you, Cody? Uh, underperforming, I mean, it was really wasn't any card that I had in particular that underperformed. Uh, just some things that I just chose not to play at the time. Yeah. Like uh, Mog 13, I didn't play it until I played you in top four. The rest of the time I was discarding it for like a 2CP backup. Yeah. Uh, and then adding the Devout, I, I think Devout's still too slow. 
Right, which uh, is so weird, right? Considering how yeah. strong of a card it is. Yeah, so I didn't I didn't actually play that at all the entire tournament. Okay. What about you, Adam? Uh for me it was probably Masked Woman. Um we put that in there like a couple weeks ago and I was like, Yeah, this yeah. thing makes sense, it's great, it's gonna catch people off guard. I don't think I played it once. I played it in a gunslinger match, that was it. Okay. Um yeah. And it wasn't that it was bad, and it was, I don't think I'd take it out or anything, but it definitely underperformed. After that, I, I didn't have that many casts of Valifor, actually. Really? Uh, Were you it, playing the three Valifor? I only played two. Me and okay. Curtis played two in our list. I know Hunter, Hunter really plays for the Valifor turn, so he right. runs three. The the difference, though, too, is that the Hunter doesn't have no-no? Yeah, Hunter does not play no-no. We've discussed so, that a couple times. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. All right, so yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, how, how many uh, Mions did you have? I only ran one in my okay. list. We actually ended up reducing to one um, to cut in for Summoner, okay. which was really good for me. Um, Summoners came to play a lot. Uh, it dealt well with like Doom Trains, yeah. uh, Hecaton Chairs, stuff that people want to try to deal with when I'm on, when I'm on my turn, shit yeah. my monsters. My list was really different than yours. Um, I talked a lot with Curtis about with my list, which I definitely want to cover talking about uh, like open deck list sharing um, because I had talked a lot with Curtis about my deck list going in. Um, I didn't really have any fear of like being like, oh no, they're gonna know my deck list, uh, because the odds of you playing against those people are, are very slim. You know, like I shared very openly with Curse about what what I planned on playing up until I switched to the last minute, but I never ha had to play against Curse. I never had to play against any of you guys. And w with a field of ninety one people, that seems very unlikely, right? That you're gonna you're gonna play against these people that you shared these lists with. Yeah, for sure. Uh, funny enough, I played against both of them in Swiss. That's fair, but you're also like you know your teammates with one of them, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, me and Curtis, we bounce ideas off a lot. Our lists were very, very similar. Uh, I think two cards difference yeah. going into the event. Right, I, th they, I think that's what Curtis said, too. Um, yeah, all right, so you actually asked the question, what was the what if, uh, what won the what if tournament afterwards? Uh, so basically what we did afterwards is we, we had all the decks built to try them out, like try our matchups up the night before, and then when we got back... After the event, uh, rather than go see the play, we just wanted to relax, so we just stayed home and played some more Final Fantasy. So we started jamming the decks against each other, and I think Nick's deck was insane. Did you guys see Nick's deck at all? Was that, that the Wind Water? Uh, it's Earth Water. Or Earth Water. It's it's, it's yeah, Mono Earth, Earth splashing Minwoo. Um, yeah, I actually I played his teammate in uh, Swiss, I believe, and he did not have a happy time with monsters. Okay. Yeah, I. So he didn't get to play against you in the what if tournament, but the it it, it smashed my deck and it smashed ice. Um, and the reason being, at least the reason it smashed my deck was Mono Earth is actually kind of a, a very yeah. easy matchup for my deck because you have Diablos, um, which is like the breaker. Uh, the problem is is that the best card in the matchup is actually Archer for me, um, and then you have to they have so many things that you have to Archer like. Like, in a crow stops your Diabolus Cactar one trick. Um, you have Minwoo, which is obviously absurdly good against my deck. And then the actual problem, which was uh, key, in me keying me winning my top 16 match, was the playtesting through it, was the actual problem was Graviton. Uh, that card's such a nightmare for me. <laughs> because I can never Hecaton and fight their guys and win. Because he'll Hecaton in response, fight two other guys, and then his guy is just huge. Or if he if he cockatrices and then his guy's just huge, so. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I I felt like I felt like Nick's deck was probably one of the best one of the best decks out of the top sixteen. Um, I had to get really lucky to beat him, and there was actually a a misplay from both of us. Like we misinterpreted a card, and it's huge. It was huge. So what happened was I actually don't remember this, but he he messaged me like. Uh, a couple hours after the event, he's like, I think when we kept, we kept, he hit a, a Rubon as an EX burst and targeted his, um, his Kamlinot to fight my Kamlinot. And we both put ours in the break zone, treating it like a Hecaton. Neither of us caught this. There's a judge watching our match who also didn't catch this. Um, and so that would have been huge. Uh, I don't know, like, if it would have changed the match or not, but. It does. It does kind of go to say like how tired people were at the near the end of that event, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I don't know. It, it felt crazy. I think that all my matches came. There were certainly like some misplays that were played. Um, right. Yeah, it was interesting. All right, what's our next? What's our next question? We should answer. Uh, Adam has an, 
a second part to that okay. question. How does it I feel didn't... to know you have a three round buy going into? Oh, the I didn't even see that part. Oh man, it feels so insane. Um, three round buy going to Nats means you need to go two and two, two and two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because oh, well, we're probably looking at seven rounds of Swiss, right? That's and what you I'm get thinking. The first three rounds went uh, as a win, so yeah. Uh, but the big difference is, is, is it just depends if you're allowed to if you're allowed to be on the floor during the Swiss ra- during during the first three rounds. I, if, I would assume that you can, right? Like I can't imagine they ban people from the floor, but I get what you're saying, right? Like, you know, to walk around and walk around. Like, you you take like you you know the good players in the room. You with a notepad and you take a, a simple notepad and you walk around and you write down the top twenty players deck decks that they're playing. You have a good idea of who your round four opponents, what what your round four opponents playing going into round four, uh, which could be a huge advantage. <coughs> yeah, so absolutely. I think it's huge. Yeah, not, I think it's a big deal. Yeah, not to mention how tired you are after playing three rounds. You know. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, you don't even have to do all the thinking. All you have to do is watch other people play and know what they're on. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's a big deal. Right. I was just curious how you feel. I'd feel pretty good about it too. I'm not gonna lie. So. Um, it's probably, uh, it's probably the s- third most exciting part of winning was to me was that <laughs> the the first part was actually just telling my wife that I won because like she's like my biggest fan and like being able to like j- justify going all the way to Kansas. Uh, and so she's not like you go there. And, and, and you didn't win. What the heck? You know, <laughs> my wife's very much results oriented. So, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the second best thing is just like, it's just cool to have a second trophy there in Kansas. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. You so, seem to win a fair amount there. It, <laughs> yeah, I, I get lucky there. Um, Jake Lee, and, and here, and this is actually a transition question. Jake Lee asks, can or cinnamon delights? So the can was. I was playing against that that the Nick Nick's matchup and I just could not win. I could not win. I'm telling you guys, it was unwinnable. It's not close. And then Jake's wife in the morning offered a can of good luck, some random can of vegetables to Zach who passed. I snapped off. No, I'll take it. Not close. <laughs> and she's oh no, this isn't your can. I have a can for you. And she goes against the can and I just like I put my backpack. She's like, Oh wait, you're really taking it? And I'm like, absolutely. I'll need all the luck I can get. So I put that can in my back back. But the the other question was or cinnamon delights. Now Adam, I told you about cinnamon delights. Did I not? You did, and I sh- I should have heeded your advice. <laughs> so going into going into day two, I talked to Adam about the key to to having Sorry, a success. No Oh, that's good. A key to have a successful win in Kansas is Cinnamon Delights going into day two. So you always got to stop by Taco Bell, order Cinnamon Delights, and you win 100% of the time. Now, I gave this advice to Adam. He chose to ignore it. That's not my fault. Um, I don't know, Cody, do you have any Cinnamon Delights? I do not. I... <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. I mistakes. It, worked. it still worked out for you, though. You got your top four. You got your invite. A second yeah. invite. Never mind. Sorry. So you already had your invite. I did. Yeah. Which, hey. So, uh, but oh, I was trying to get some buys, and I don't know. Maybe Gen Con. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm really gonna try to make Gen Con. So. Okay. That's that's so that's interesting to me. So you already have an invite. You already booked to Kansas because you didn't know you were gonna get an invite, right? You already planned on making that drive. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, we found out about the local being a, a nearby shop, maybe a week beforehand. Yeah. And then the time got changed. It was supposed to be at 11 a.m. my time. And then we figured we could play in that and then leave for Kansas. Uh, but then it got switched to 4.30 p.m. So we didn't even get into KC until like 3 in the morning. So okay. it was very But I think rough. that just goes to show like the, the strength of the buys, right? That you're you're still wanting to go all the way to Gen Con. I mean, granted, it's just fun to play. But you're, you're traveling all the way to Gen Con because you need to, su- like, to secure these buys. Yeah, I, I would like to, and I've never been to any convention, so... Okay. Yeah, and Gen Con's a heck of a one to go to. Yeah, and, and obviously the community is just awesome to just be around, like yeah. be around talking to you guys and all that stuff, so... Yeah, and I definitely... I, I'm going to want to touch on that too here in a minute. Adam, are you going to Gen Con also? I, I will 100% be there. I'm trying to try to qualify before I go, just yeah. so like it's not as uh, stressful. Right. But uh, I'm 100% in there. I've already paid. I've already signed up for Sealed and Constructed. Right. So Gen, Gen Con is actually going to be Opus 6, which ties into the next question from uh, Benjamin Parrott. Um, do you have any thoughts on what you might pilot for Nats or Opus 6? So this this is this is a kind of a tricky question because I don't know how much you guys want to reveal if you've 
the thing is, is that you certainly haven't done that much testing because we just don't have all the cards yet. But are, is there anything you guys are really excited for? I, I really want to try like a big fire list. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, and I, don't, I certainly don't know if that's what I'm going to like bring in ads if I make it or Gen Con for that matter. Right. Um, but like some of the cards are interesting, like the new um, K Tuna backup and stuff. Okay. Um, I just want to drop that off Orin one time in a game. <laughs> I just want to do it once. All right. What about uh, you, Cody? There, there, there's no good ice cards right now, right? So. Uh, well, I think there is good ice cards. I just don't know if they're if they're good enough to like. I like the new Kuja, but I, yeah. I like the old Kuja better. Um, you, you, I mean, so far, if I'm going when I go to Nats, I'm playing Wind Water because that's always my that's my favorite deck. I played it at last Nats, and uh, I don't know. Uh, that's my most comfortable deck that I can play. Interesting. All right, that that's interesting. I I have to say that I'm leaning towards like some sort of big summons deck with the Earth backup. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it'll pan out, but I I really do like that card quite a bit. Um, all right, let's see. So Vincent asked, um. Oh, he's actually just messaged me right now, too. Um, he'd asked what you would change in your deck and why. We already talked about that. And what was your MVP cards? So I'll talk about my MVP cards. It's so easy just to say Data Luma. Um, but I think that the, the card that kept stopping me from losing games was Istola. Like, there's so many times where I would just minor back for Istola just to protect what I had. And I wasn't sure that it was going to win me the game, but I knew that it was going to stop me from losing the game. Yeah, uh, in my top 16 match, he minor just stole it twice. I saw five just stole in one game. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's okay. crazy. All right, what about you, Cody? What was your what was your top card, do you think, the one that most performed for you? Um, I'd probably have to say, I think, Thaumaturge. Just having the early pressure is just... For most people, they don't know how to deal with it. So they'll panic and, like, instead of playing the backups, they'll drop a forward down, which is just what I want them to do anyhow. Yeah. Um, so I think Thaumaturge probably was the MVP of my pick, at least. Okay. What about you, Adam? Uh, I mean, it's easy to say, like, Cobalt Droid. Um, right, yeah. I mean, that, that's, like, where most of my damage comes from. But if it's not that, uh, Rao Bomb was really good for me this weekend. That was another late tech card that we included in, and a lot of people just weren't playing around it. No, I hit, like... Yeah, go ahead. I'm hoping Curtis told you where some of these ideas were coming from. Uh, yeah, no, he did, he did, he did, he did. He did. Because uh, he, he, he brought that up, and I was like, wow, that's a really good idea. Um, yeah. I killed probably, like, two or three Kalmanots with that card. Because yeah. they're just like they'll slam it down and they'll be like win, and think they're safe. Yep. Uh, and then I'll just play Ralbon on it, and they're dead. Um, so, so let me let me let me say where where my deck where my deck came from too, because I think that's actually one of the questions that's gonna be asked is like why I chose my fifty cards. Um, and so I've been talking a lot with Curtis about uh, monsters, and I wanted to play monsters. I was dead set on playing monsters, um, but I had been playing around with a, a, a list that. You know, I, I haven't played in any big events. We've been kind of keeping it under wraps. I've been, it was mostly like a, a list that I read from um, Vince Scantlin, and it was a deck with monsters, Rabon, and Viking. Um, and Rabon was nuts in the deck, because it's always a way to kill Emperor. You had Adamantois, it protected your things. What I added to the deck was Camelot, and so that was my biggest suggestion, too, to Curtis is like, you guys got to be playing Camelot. Yeah, um, we swapped that out, too. <laughs> or we yeah. swapped that in. Yeah, yeah. the Camelot's just so good. <laughs> But what had happened was, is I, I kept finding that, like, okay, Emperor's actually not that big of a deal. So maybe, what is there something else I could add? So I took out the Rabans and the Adamantois and put in Dataluma and, and Cactars, right? So I'm playing this deck and it seemed really good. And it's like, well, obviously I want Simi if I have Dataluma. So I'll just take out some other of these cards, put in Simi, right? It's like, oh, well, I have Simi, so now I want, <laughs> I want three Star Symbol. So before I knew it, my, my deck was basically Josh Guz's deck minus some cards and add Cobra Droid to it. And the reason I, I mentioned this is because you mentioned how good Droid was for you. Like, Droid won me so many games. There are just so many matchups where they just don't have an answer to Droid, and the game ends. I mean, they're, they're just, there's a lot of decks that just don't even run two drops. So, like, I mean, Ice Ice has them in, in spades, but yeah. like a, lot, a lot of decks just don't run them, and... Or if they run them, it's like two or three. Right. And so he just gets under, and you have to have removal for my one CP monster. So it's it's rough. And it, it's also hard to deal with because you really can't deal with it on your turn most of the time. Unless right. you have, like, monster hate in your deck. Right, yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine, Cody, you're not too worried about Cobra Droid Druids in your deck? Uh, no, not too much. Uh, Thaumaturge and Argath definitely help with that. Right. And then uh, 
Actually, Glassy Labolas, after they make him a forward and swing, has has helped a lot. Right, I, and I was also thinking like like when I was de- when I was testing the matchup um, with the ice and monsters, I was thinking that like if if they just activate the Cobalt Joy Druid, oftentimes that's enough for you to ju- for you to in response Glacia to just dole it and then make them discard a card and they don't get their untapped trigger with no no and their turn just ends. Yeah, that's a big deal too. Oh, uh, I actually I made one misplay in a mono ice matchup where uh, I messed up my no no trigger. And I tap. I had my summoner tap down to when I could have pitched an extra card to play the gal that I played. Yeah. And uh, I activated the death gaze, and before he allowed my Nona to go off, he just doled it and maybe discard a card, and it yeah it ruined my turn. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, we'll just breeze through some of these other ones real quick. Chris Adams asks, "What's the best place I ate at?" Um, I had a great time eating at Cheesecake Factory. Uh, we have a Cheesecake Factory here in Tampa. We have one in Brandon. We have one, everyone here. But it was just the company. Like, I got to sit with Jake and Zach and just discuss things. And it was just a good time. But but I think my honest answer would be Taco Bell. And I'm not a big Taco Bell fan. I think it's terribly unhealthy for you. Uh, but I, you just, if you're trying to win a tournament without Cinnamon Delights, you're doing it wrong. Like, uh, what, about, what about you, Cody? What was the best place you ate at? Uh, well, like I said, we got there at 3 a.m., so really the only place we ate at was uh, Saturday after we got done with uh, the Swiss rounds. Yeah. And we went to Olive Garden. Okay. Which, I mean, I, we have Olive Garden everywhere, um, but the only bad part about Olive Garden is every time I eat there, I just want to go to sleep immediately afterwards. <laughs> so we're, like, trying to play test and, like, slowly falling asleep from all the pasta and stuff, so. But oh. All right. What, the best what about you, Adam? Uh, so we hit up a local uh, Kansas barbecue place because I figured that was what we had to do while we were up there. I honestly don't remember the name, but it was really high rated and the line was really long. Uh, but it was really good. We uh, we all had like these full pork sandwiches and interesting, it was really good. Yeah, I I mean, part of me regrets not getting uh, barbecue, but we got barbecue last time that we were in Kansas. Um, so yeah, Curtis Kang ants asks uh monsters was uh if monsters was still my number one deck choice right is that what the question was i don't have it up in front of me he oh, said yeah do you still think monsters oh, okay. would be your number one pick and then how different would the results be if monsters weren't on the same side of the bracket that was his question um i i don't know um my my experience is that psychom enforcer is actually really good uh, not just because it kills a, a monster but it's the the matchup is closer than the monsters deck would like it to be although it does lose being able to kill the droids is is very good um but yeah it, monsters was was still my number one pick if i was playing in socal i would play monsters um yeah i i just i don't know if they were, i what what what'd you guys thought like what were your thoughts on you guys being first off i know you weren't happy to be on the same side of the bracket i mean no we weren't but it's it's the way things go right like it's seated um yeah it's, you know that's how the bracket lays out uh, and I had to play Hunter last round to get seated third. Yeah. But, um, I mean, you know, it sucks, but, you know, you can't do anything. It's all about just how it rolls down. So, yeah. So. Z- Zach and I are always on this side of the bracket where we play someone, and then we have to play, and then we would meet in the finals, or in this case, in the top four for qualification, but I always end up being the person that beats him. In this case, it was Cody. Um the, the instrumental part of that is that, like, I don't win those matchups without Zach losing. Um, and that, that that's because, one, if, if I have to play Zach in the mirror match, I don't know, like, he just might beat me. But, two, Zach gives me so much information. Like, he had told me, like, like how good Emperor was against you, Cody. Like, how, oh. how it solidified, like, him winning that game against you and how it would have won him game three had he not been, like, you know, misplaying. Um, but, yeah, so I felt like... I felt like I, I like prioritized Emperor in game two, and Emperor just carried me throughout game two. Yeah, he uh, as soon as I got my first flan surge off, I had Edward, and he dropped Emperor. And then game two, I had my first flan surge. I'm like, I, I actually told him, I was like, please don't Emperor me again. And he draws, gives like a little chuckle, plays Emperor. I'm like, all right. And then and uh, I think it was game two against you. It was the same thing. First flan surge, Emperor drops down. Yep. Yeah, and I had actually waited just a little bit. Um, once you had you were full on your backups, and you had mm. and then you had Edward, which was like key in me winning there. Uh, if I remember right, there was some sort of interaction where you tried to drop Orphan, and I was able to kill two of your. I killed your Sid uh, Austin and your 
and your orphan with the with the ability on the stack, and you had oh, yeah. and you had the Edward to cancel my Diabolus. Um, but you had him. But I had the Emperor. Yeah. Yeah. So it was nuts. Um, all right. So the, Andy Carmona asked, "Did you get chased out of Kansas for taking another one of the trophies?" No, no, I didn't. And here's here's the thing about Kansas. They're way too nice for that. Um, <laughs> I mean, what what was your guys' experience like in Kansas? I mean, in, in relatively compared to the other to the other places. Uh, everybody was super nice that I met. Um, even though we had to like get our Uber was like forty minutes to the airport and back. Like nobody, everybody was nice to us. I never had any issue. Yeah. Well, you. I know you're you're from the area. You've you've played in Kansas probably quite a bit. Is that right, Cody? Uh, yeah. So I'm from St. Louis, so it's pretty. It's a couple hours away, but I mean, uh, Jake. I mean, like all the Kansas guys, they're all super nice. They've always been, I mean, just the coolest people to play against. Uh, it was heartbreaking when I first saw that my first round opponent was Jake Lee. I was like, oh man, I got to play against the nicest guy in the room. Like, yeah. But no, I mean, every experience I've had there has, has been wonderful. Yeah, and and so just to touch on that a little bit, you know, Cody and I actually we we haven't had that much interaction. Um, right. and yet the night before the event, you reached out to me and was like, Hey man, if you can't find, cause I had left my deck list at home or my deck at home, which is like mind boggling to me still how that happened. But you reached out to me. He's like, Hey man, I have six of every card. If you need something like that was incredibly generous of you. I could not believe that. Um, oh yeah. And I had foils too. I had foils. Oh, <laughs> uh, well then I definitely so should have gone out to you instead. But, but that's the other thing is that, you know, also, something, you know, I, I know it feels awkward sometimes to, like, talk about yourself. Um, but, man, I, I got to say, Cody, you're, like, one of the nicest opponents I've ever played against. Um, despite the fact that you had just, obviously, dominated a, a local qualifier, you had gone undefeated day one, there's no doubt that you're one of the best players in the room. You were probably one of the most humble uh, and sincere opponents I've played against that whole day. Um, what kind of gives you that, that mentality, that attitude? Well, I think I, in past tournaments, uh, I've been bummed out, like, oh, I lost this game, or like, for instance, like at the Petite Cup, I got ninth, and I was like, I was super bummed about it, but like, now, nowadays, I just try to find like, like a good outlook on everything, so like, if I lose a game, I can be like, oh, well, maybe if I would have done this, that would have turned out all right, and like, I don't think losing is, mu is as big of a deal as people think it is anymore. Right, that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah, um, and, and you know, I have to say, like, like, well, I'll talk about, actually, I'll, I'll get there when I get there, because I want to talk about my round seven against Benjamin uh, in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. Akimoto had asked me how different my monsters list is. Well, my monsters list, as Adam knows, because I think Adam, I imagine Curse has showed you by now what my deck list looks like. So actually, I've never seen your full list. Um, okay. We would just bounce ideas off of each other, uh, and he would bring me things that were in your list that weren't in ours. Okay. Talk about that stuff, but so I hear my monsters list is Rabans, Adamantois, and Vikings. And those things aren't those things aren't optional. I think that um, Akimoto, if you're going to play monsters, you have to play Viking. Um, it it digs for your Valfor so quickly. You can actually go down to two Valfors if you have three Vikings. You have gladiators to get them back. You have gladiators to get your Psychom Enforcer back. Uh, you you can put in Dark Knight at instant speed to bump to pump your droid over their droids. Um, but most importantly, what it does is it allows you to get free CP every time you attack. So there's there's times where you'll play like Viking. And then another Viking, and the next turn you attack with both, stack the no-no triggers, Valfor, draw two cards, untap everything, then get to attack with your monsters. You drew two cards. You, it, it puts you just so far ahead, and then you can just replay your Vikings for free, for less than free. Uh, not to mention turn one, uh, turn one two drop backup, turn two Viking into Mion, is basically like playing a one CP backup and drawing a card. Like, if, if, if summoners and evokers drew cards when they came into play, that's what that is. Um, yeah, Viking was really good for me. Um, I wanted to fit more in, yeah. for sure, because I only ran as a one-off, because Curtis cut Realm for his second one. Yeah. And uh, he cut Realm because they, him and Hunter have the worst luck with Realm I've ever seen. And I get it. Um, yeah. Usually it's okay for me. So I kept the three Realms in and ran one Viking. And it was every time I played Viking, it was really good. Yeah, it's to me it's very good. I would, I would cut all the realms if it wasn't for the mirror match. Um, yeah, where I think that you have to have realm to make Shantota relevant. 
Um, yeah, actually, you know, it's crazy uh, going into Kansas City. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I told yeah. a lot of people that. Maybe I shouldn't have told people that. But yeah, so <laughs> many times you just realm their droid and then you play Shantoto and they're like, oh, crap. Yeah, Curtis told me. And um, like, you should have seen the look on my face when he told me because I was so dumbfounded. I was like, how did I not know that you could realm someone else's monster and then remove it? The, the best realm target is actually Cleon. Yeah, for because sure. The, yeah. Not, not just because I don't get to draw a card, but because it just happens to be like the best card against you. Yeah. Um, James Lockwood asked about revealing information. Do you guys know what this question stems from? Um, uh, I, I heard that something about like you had played something and then took so it back or something. So this, this, this kept happening to me. What I was doing is I would go to discard um, CP for the turn and then change my mind before a cast... Before before playing the card. Now, technically, you're supposed to play the card, you, you announce the card, pay the costs, which are locked in, and then play the card. But what, what was happening is, the game to me is so dynamic and changes so quickly that like as I'm doing these things, my mind is actually just changing. Like I'm playing around different things. So I guess what the commentators were saying is that like I kept putting myself at a huge disadvantage because I was revealing my hand half of the time. Um, and they said, well, maybe he's doing this like to like kind of throw his opponent off, like play mind games. Um, there are things I do to play mind games, um, of course, as anyone should. That's not one of them. I don't think you should reveal your hand to play mind games. It's actually a very dangerous game to, to play. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think about that? Like, is, is that something you guys do sometimes often, too, is like... Is sometimes you discard something and you're like, wait, I'm not going to discard that. You pick it back up. You're like, well, I just revealed that information. Yeah, I, I've done that before. Um, but what I try to do now is I'll I'll start making piles face down of my hand. I see Hunter do that too. I think that's a really um, good idea. And so like, I'll be like, okay, here's the cards I'm going to discard in this pile here. Here's the cards that I'm thinking about playing. Uh, here's the cards I don't necessarily want to discard, but I, I can, you know, maybe I'll start switching that to the first pile. And then once the first pile is like, okay, this is definitely what I'm discarding to play, then I'll play it the card at that point but i have definitely done that like i've definitely pl put something in the break zone and then about to play something and be like okay i don't want to discard that let me discard this and then play the card right yeah what about you cody uh yeah i've definitely i mean i've definitely discarded things i didn't want to discard but usually if i if i do it i'm just like all right well they've already seen like i discarded say glassy lobolus i'm just right. gonna leave it there and... it's much worse now in your hand right right yeah uh, especially like if you try to like pick it up and then, no, nah, I, I just try, not, try not to reveal anything. That's, but, that's yeah. probably the better way to do it. Um, and maybe with more practice, the thing is, is that the, the thing is that I don't have a ton of practice playing, um, in person right now. I'm very out of practice because our, our locals have been firing. I've only been playing octagon, which I knew would affect me somehow. Um, and in octagon, I, ha I usually have my entire break zone laid out. I have entire damage zone laid out. I have everything laid out, stretched, their damage zone laid out, their break zone laid out. And so I can see everything and make my plays accordingly. Whereas like here, I'm having to go through their break zone. Um, and then it does make me stress about time. And so when I'm discarding, I'm usually in a hurry. And then I'm like, crap, that's, that's the worst thing. And I take it back and it's like, I just give the information away. So yeah, that's not on purpose. I'm not trying to give my opponents information. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of in, a lot of ways that that would benefit me. Um, Daniel asked me what made me choose my my specific fifty cards. Basically, I answered that um, I chose my deck going in because uh, I, I showed Josh Go my list of monsters, and he said like this ended up being very close. It was just like seven cards off of his list without monsters. He's like, why don't you just play my deck? It's better. And I was like, you know, I don't know. Like uh, I couldn't actually give him a good reason. Um, and the reason ended up being that I think that Kefka is bad right now. Um, and so I switched to Frimper and I would definitely never, never go back on that. Uh, what about you, Cody? Why'd you choose Mono Ice? Be besides, uh, besides a qualifier, what, what made you choose Mono Ice going into the qualifier, for example? Well, I felt like it was the most, obviously being a monocolor deck, it's usually going to be more consistent than anything else. Uh, I was really high on wind water as well. Um, just because I'm super comfortable with the deck and the standard units package is pretty nuts. Um, but no, I just felt like at playing a one-color deck was going to be the, the most consistent way of going about it. I knew I was going to face a lot of Camelot, which was going to be an issue. For so sure. that was really the main card I was worried about. Uh, but For uh, sure. It, it worked out pretty well. So, 
Yeah, what, what about you, Adam? I, I mean, I know you've been playing Monsters for quite a bit now. Yeah, I've been playing Monsters for at least three, I think two to three months, I guess, at this point. Uh, I mean, I've been playing Monster decks for a while, but this specific one for, for about that long time. Uh, I tried all the different decks. Um, Wind Earth, Mono Ice, Mono Lighting. Um, and just none of them clicked as, with me as much as the Monster deck clicked with me. I, I just like to, to play the way that... I know it's really annoying. Like, you, like you play stuff, I'll just keep killing it until I build my board and then you die. Yeah. Um, but but I like being able to control the pace of the game that way. Sure. Yeah. Um, so so it just kind of appealed to me that way, and and I'm, I'm I think I'm okay on it. So so I uh, that's why I went with it. Cool, cool. Um, I did want to real quick. I wanted to cover my round seven match against uh, Benjamin. Um, going into day, going into round seven, I think most of us assumed that most of the X twos were going to make it right. Like I think like some people's. Thoughts were something like 10 X2s would make it and 5 would miss. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's what it was. And then I, I had heard even through Swiss people were saying there were so many double losses that people were thinking an X3 might make it, but that ended up not being the case. Right. Uh, is that similar to what you had thought too, Cody, going in? Yeah, I heard I had heard somebody mention that 6 uh, X2s would miss, uh, but I wasn't... I was trying not to even focus on that. I wasn't really sure, too worried yeah. about winning. I was just trying to not misplay at all. Yeah, at X and O, I imagine you weren't that, that <laughs> you weren't you weren't too worried about that. Uh, but so going into round seven, I got paired against. Uh, I, I, let me just say this actually, going into round six, um, you got paired against Ben, right, Benjamin? Is that correct, uh, Cody? Me? Yeah. No, no. Round Who was six. It? Round six, I got paired against. I do not know his name, but it was the guy playing. Uh, Archfiend Golba is actually. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. I was trying to think because someone... Okay, no. You were at the top of the table. Someone I knew got paired against Ben, um, who was playing Mono Lightning. And then we both said, like, after this round, we're okay with getting paired against each other. Because Ben and I were actually in the finals of the Petite Cup. One of the most interesting matches I've ever had in my life. Um, and so we had said, like, after this round, we're okay with getting paired. And sure enough, round seven came and we did get paired. And so we actually had a, a very casual match. I mean, we both tried our best, but we both had assumed that we'd be in even with a loss. We were up at like table four. We were very high um, in seedings. And then when top 16 was announced, Benjamin got actually 17th. So yeah, was, it was it was devastating. Um, I think not just to Ben, but to, like to me too, because I, I felt, I don't know how to describe it. I felt like, I felt crushed for him, if that makes sense. I had really hoped to play against him in the top 16. Um, I really hoped to play him in a best two of three format. Like, I just, like, our, our matches were so interesting. It was really sad. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, man. Like, it, it Ben's, Ben's one of the guys who, who's run Collector's Cash. Uh, they run a great shop out there. It's really cool. Um, I hope that he enjoyed, I hope the Kai, I gave, I ended up getting him the Squall Kai Arts, because that's his favorite character. Um, and hopefully that made up a little bit for it. <laughs> I mean, I, I doubt it, it put a, a dent in, in how he feels about it, but man, it would have been, it was just super sad for that to happen. Um, uh, there was one more thing I want to talk about. Someone had mentioned the mono, uh, my mono water matchup. I don't know if you guys have, you guys had a chance to watch the, the top cut at all? I, I haven't yet. I haven't watched all of it. I watched... Not, not to be selfish, but I watched my match, and then <laughs> I hadn't watched any more because it finally uploaded on my phone. Nice. So I was watching it on the way back from Kansas, actually. So there was this um, – there was this uh, – I, I'm definitely going to go more into this in some sort of article, but there was this – there's this situation that happened where he had, I think, four – he had either three fours or four fours on the board, um, and I EX burst a star symbol, Right. And it was actually one of the most awkward EX bursts I could have possibly hit because I already had a Shantoto in my hand and I was mm -hmm. planning on Shantotoing. And so I actually could not decide here what to take. So I want you to put you guys in my situation, all right? I have the Shantoto in my hand. I EX burst Shantoto. Now, I know you guys don't have the same um, experience on my deck example, but what do you guys do? Do you get the Shantoto or do you not get the Shantoto? Cody, I'll start with you. Um, I don't, I haven't, I can't remember. Did you play two or three copies of Shantoto? I, I played three, 
Um, there was none in the yard. Oh, uh, I would probably go ahead and grab the Shantoto. Okay. Um, but. All right. What and why? Why would you grab the Shantoto? I don't, just to, I don't want them to know. Like if I grab like Simi Lafina or something like that. So if you grab Simi, it kind of tells them that you have Shantoto in your hand already. Maybe. Yeah, I feel like it's already gonna tell them that. Yeah. Okay. What about what about you, Adam? Yeah, I, I think no matter what you grab, you're probably already telling your opponent that you have Shantoto. <laughs> right. That's yeah. the way I feel about it. So I feel like you might as well grab the other one. Because... Well, I guess I could grab Cam too. I can't remember if there's yeah. a reason I didn't get to grab Cam. Uh, I'd have to decide if I'd already played a Cam that game, which I think might have happened. Um, so I'll, I'll just tell you guys what I did and, and why it was awkward. I grabbed Shantoto. Um, and the reason being is that if I grab Simi, I have one less card to discard to Shantoto because I want to play Simi. It's one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, if I grab Simi and then discard Simi, I now have one less Simi to draw. And I have one more Shantoto to draw. And I don't want to draw the Shantoto, which I already have one on the field. If I go get the Shantoto, it's a free discard to the Shantoto I already have in my hand. Um, but it's awkward because I think that my opponent knows that he needs to be aggressive here um, if I stumble. So getting the Shantoto makes it to where he won't play another forward. Now, here's why I asked you guys if you had seen the match. He actually ended up playing another forward. Wow. Which was, yeah, it was it was very, it was really awkward. So, obviously, I didn't hesitate. I untapped, I attacked. He, he did the right thing, and, like, I think he blocked. And then I shantotoed. Um, but, yeah, so, so some people were asking me, like, you know, why did he play another, he, like, he, in, in the forward he played was Ash. Um, yeah, that, that seems weird to me too. Yeah, honestly. and Ash is obviously very good against my deck. Um, if I don't, if I can't draw a Diabolus, um, uh, can I? How many? Um, how many backups did you have, and how many cards are in your hand? I don't remember. I'd have to rewatch. To be honest with you, I had a lot of. I probably had a. The answer is I probably had a lot of backups, and I probably had a lot of cards because that's okay. how. I, that's how I play the deck. Right. My, yeah, my, I, my I is against know. Cody. Against Cody, it's a little different. Yeah, I just I didn't know if like maybe he thought you didn't have the Earth Mana to play or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but so it also goes to say like how, how like it is how like my like, you know how nervous are you when you're playing under camera you know like like obviously like that seems like a mistake um but not just under camera but like we're we've been playing Final Fantasy all day a lot of people aren't realizing that like a lot of us were playing Final Fantasy Friday night right we played Final Fantasy all day Cody you played a qualifier I played in the local Adam you're probably working it in flu. <laughs> But, you know, then we woke up Saturday and we played Final Fantasy all day. Deck lists were published before we left the venue. So we went in the 8, and then we went home and played Final Fantasy all night, right? Um, we wake up, we play some more Final Fantasy. Like, how how tired are we? Like, did you guys find that you were making mistakes the same, the same like, this, like, like maybe, maybe, like, you don't play Ash into Shantoto, but you're, you're making those sort of mistakes, right? I, I, most of my mistakes definitely came toward the end of the day. For sure. I mean, monsters usually are pretty, like, long matches. They're not yeah. usually very short. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of plays involved and a lot of different things you have to do. And so, yeah, I, there was a few misplays I had, but they were all at the end of the day. And it was definitely because I was just like, why did I do that? Like, I'm an idiot, you know? Yeah. What about you, Cody? Uh, yeah, like, I think definitely being on uh, the stream, that I was, I felt, like, more pressured uh, just because right. I was... I was really hoping to get a stream match, and then Richard Brady told me I was going to get one. I was like, all right, sweet. Yeah. Uh, but then if you go back and watch my match in game two, uh, my opponent summons Garnett and swings with it in the same turn, and I just, like, take the damage. Like, I didn't even realize, like, Garnet doesn't have haste. I just took the damage anyhow. Like, Oh, this, and this was on stream? Oh, yeah, yeah. And did you guys yeah, never, did you guys fix it, or what happened? No, I ended up, I won the next turn, and I think oh, okay. it wouldn't it wouldn't have made, like, a huge difference. Uh, but my buddy, I know he. When I got home, he told me that he was blown off the chat. Like he just summoned Garnett, and uh, like Lauren, uh, they yeah. announced it. Like I think he just summoned that Garnett, and but I just yeah. took the damage. Yeah, I had a, I had a in, in the finals against Aaron. I um, I thought for a moment, right? And and Aaron actually ended up losing game, game two because he loses Emperor by attacking with it. But there's a there's a time where I think I have my fours on the board. He has nothing. I think like if I attack here. I need to put some pressure on him. The only thing I lose to is if he top decks a third Cecil, right? If, if he top decks a third Cecil, that's the only thing I lose to. And I'm thinking, like, do I attack? Do I attack? I'm like, well, you know what? Like, the odds of him to third Cecil aren't high. So I think that I'm going to attack. Um, so I attack. 
and he flips over the last Cecil in the deck. The odds are like, I don't know, I have to do the math, but they're not good. But what we both forgot is that he actually just had a Layak in the board, so he should have drawn that Cecil. Um, oh. So the judge stops us and says, well, we need to rewind. You're going to draw that Cecil, and then you'll take the damage. So I end up not being EX burst as a Cecil, um, which it just seemed weird that like we both we both sat there and talked about how good the Cecil was going to be on EX burst, and we just for, both forgot about the Layak. And we're both just so tired, you know? Um I think like people don't under like people in the chat like they, they they forget how easy it is to like forget things when you're playing the game and you're like you know you're exhausted and yeah definitely like uh even when I tried to Edward your Diabolos while you had Emperor up like I was, I didn't even look at your board I was just like there's a summon I'm gonna try and cancel it like right and you had you had just uh not been able to do that against Zach the 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 game before right yeah yeah I which was is just like which is one of the things that's so interesting is like um, people, people at least in on, on Facebook, on YouTube, they would be like, "Oh, look, they cheated! They cheated!" They, or they're trying to cheat, right? Which is not that cheating implies that you did this on purpose, right? And these things are going to happen on accident, um, all all the time. In fact, these things happen, and I, I think that's one of the things that does frustrate me too is that people just like assume that that's that's cheating. You know, like w one of the things that happened against me is my opponent. Um, my opponent went to summon a Minwu, or cast a Minwu, and they tapped the wrong CP. They had no, they didn't tap any blue CP, and so they played their Minwu, and then they immediately they, they immediately caught it, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't tap blue for for Minwu. Uh, do you want to call a judge?" And I was just like, uh, "No, just tap tap your blue." <laughs> Like I don't, you know, why would I? Why, you know, why would you call 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 a judge there if like you did it on yourself? Now, of course, if it had gone to the next turn, then I'd be a little bit more concerned that maybe he had done it on purpose. But the guy caught himself, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it just seems to me that people are too hard on on each other during like the Twitch chats. But yeah, I think I, I've seen quite a bit of that. Yeah. Um, but one of one of the Go one ahead. of the, one of the last questions that was asked, um, I believe, is. Do you think that um, do you think that the the top eight? Aaron asked, <laughs> ironically, because we went to time. Do you think the top eight should be timed or top sixteen? I am pretty against the top sixteen being timed. Um, but I think that if I just asked you guys, you guys will go over the same reasons, unless you guys are forward timed. What do you guys think? I, I'm. I think it should be untimed. Like I don't think it should be timed at all. Okay. And what were your reasons for that? Uh, I mean, I think. Especially when you're getting to a two out of three, and you're already at that point in the tournament, like there's a lot to go over, and games can take a while, and you don't want you don't want a game that means that much to go to a ton. Like, like say for some reason, I think it almost happened. I want to say might have been was it your match, Sam? Maybe where like there was a game two or a game three that almost went the time in top sixteen. Um, most of my match, I tend to play a little slower than most people, unfortunately. Um, but. Most of my matches finished with about like five minutes left or so. They were they were all pretty close. But my my mono water yeah the mono water matchup went to time and I had won game one and in game two he couldn't kill me. Yeah, so I mean like the nightmare scenario right is like you get through game two and you're almost on time and at that point like now you're in game three sudden death. Yeah. And say you're like a Fasoya deck or something like. Right. That's terrible. Or even right. for me like a monster deck I I want to take damage early on. Yeah, and, and now it, we're. In this scenario where whoever takes damage first is going to lose, you know, and it's so it was so awkward for me too because, you know, that matchup I I had known was a was a, was a was a problem for going to time, and so I I did I had asked my opponent several times, you know, hey, and you don't you don't get this on the stream, you you can't hear us talking. I'm like, you know, hey, can we please make sure we're playing we're both playing at a reasonable rate? You know, I tend to what I what I tend to do is I I do take my time during really important turns. But I play every other turn as fast as possible to make up for that. You know, my turn ones and twos are often probably pretty quick if if I don't have a really um, complex hand, at least. Um, and so, you know, I'd ask my opponent, like, we need to play faster, we need to play faster, we need to play faster. And the reason I was saying that is I knew going in, I didn't want to go to time against this guy. He had Gordons, so he could very much, I know this seems like an awkward card, but when you're in, when you go to turns and you, your opponent can just go turn one Gordon, right? They have two options. They get to attack into you first to kill you and sudden death. Or if you play a big guy, they can just block your big guy all day and take no damage. 
So I just felt super awkward about it. What about what about you, Cody? Uh, I think I actually uh, I played against that same mono water guy in round two. Uh, so I, I I'm familiar with the deck and what you're talking about. Uh, I don't think it should be timed at top sixteen. Um, just because in person I've seen you like at the Petite Cup. I remember when you were against Mono Wind. It wasn't on stream, and I think I was probably one of maybe two people actually getting to watch your match. Yeah, against Devin. And you won, like, I mean, it was, like, turn three, like, final turn, you won. In time. Yeah. And then later on, we're on our way back from Kansas, mm-hmm. and you win turn three of time in the finals. And I'm like, yep. how was he, like, like so calm? I don't know. I, I guess mean, I could see I wasn't. Questions. I wasn't calm, yeah. I mean, I, I probably, like, portrayed that I was calm, but, yeah, no. Because yeah, we the, were, like, nail-biting in the car, like, Oh my god, is Sam gonna win? Is he gonna win? <laughs> the, the, the other thing though is that like I hate changing my game plan based on time. I right. I, I knew right, and Aaron's a really good, Aaron was a really good player. Um, I don't love Aaron's deck. There's a few things I would change, uh, but he's a, a his deck he played was cool. It was it was it was uh the design the design was amazing. I think with a few changes he would beat me, but the fact is is that I knew Aaron was a good player. And I knew he knew that that time was going to come down to Adele. I knew the matchup was going to come down to Adele. Is Adele going to be able to beat me in turn three of time? That was going to be the entire match. And so I played accordingly to play around Adele. And he played accordingly to play into making sure that he had the minor available to Adele to kill me. Um, and that just feels so awkward that we had to shift the game. Because normally I'd be like, okay, so what if he plays Adele, if he mogs for Adele or miners for Adele and hits me a few times? My deck is designed to come back in the late game. Um, so those things are fine. But now I have to switch my entire deck around to figure out how I'm going to beat him in turn three of time. Which, of course, takes time to think about. Not to mention that, you know, the top 16 is played on a whole new day. So it's seen, and we're finished by like four o'clock. It seems like we could afford, um, you know, if they're going to have it timed, I would like to see like 90 minutes, right? We're at 70 right now. Is that what it is? Yeah, 70 minutes. So it was. I think that if, if, if you get 30 minutes per match and you have people going to time on average, then in the finals, you or, or at least in the top 16, you can expect people to play 30 minutes per match. Maybe not always, obviously. But at least give them that option to play at a rate in which they're they're normally used to. Yeah. So. Yeah, I can I, agree with ninety minutes. Yeah, if if they're gonna keep it timed, or at least have the finals be untimed, because it really. So this this finals was won with me. Like the last finals, Ben was gonna win if we went to time, and I happened to kill him on turn three, in the petite cup. This finals, I have no idea what was gonna happen, because I won in turn three of time. He had five cards in his hand. I had five cards in my hand. Or something like that. So we don't know. So it does make it kind of awkward, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, and then one of the last things I want to do, uh, Akimoto's question, I'm going to answer a little bit more in depth than probably a written article. It'll be like, what, what, what are the thoughts going before, during, and after the tournament? Um, I know I'm going to talk to Cody for sure about this, and hopefully Adam can qualify. But one of the biggest things going into nationals is like, I'd like to form some sort of team. Um, so we'll definitely be talking more about that with you guys, uh, because I think that's like really important. Um, I think sharing deck lists is huge. I think like for example, I I hope like like Ben had shared me his deck list before going to the event. I'd give him a lot of suggestions. He took some of those suggestions. I hope it helped him do well. Uh, me and Curtis had talked a lot. Hopefully those suggestions helped you, Adam, and helped Curtis. Um, but yeah, so I think that like one of the last things is like. You know, what's the now that I'm qualified, what am I planning on doing? And that's to form a team to get ready for nationals. <laughs> I'd I'd like to end the lol in a hashtag. <laughs> like I I would want mo- more than anything for NA to uh, win worlds this year. So Yeah, I think I think that would be really dope, honestly. Yeah. And I'm all for a team kind of thing too. I need to get my qualifier though. That needs to happen first. Yeah. So we'll at least be talking to Cody about something in the in the works. Uh, what what is what's your plan right now, Cody? Like, what where do you, how are you prepping for Nats now that you're qualified? Um, so I'm basically I I've already been to one locals. I'm getting ready to leave for another local here in 20 minutes. Right after we finish this, I'll be heading to that local. So oh, nice. I mean, I'm just nonstop playing. Uh, I had a guy 
comment on something uh, about that I could get Octagon to work on my Mac because that's something I'm unavailable to do. Yeah. Um, Maybe try so and boot camp that, or something like that. Yeah, do do something. I'm not too computer savvy yet, so okay. I'm working on it. Cool, cool. Uh, but no, I'm all I'm all for forming some kind of team. Cool. Uh, I have no problem sharing my we'll, deck list turn. <laughs> we'll wrap that up then because I don't want to discuss too much about that. <laughs> right. Top um, secret. Yeah, top secret. As we just talked about sharing deck lists. Um, but anyway, I thank you guys for joining me. Um, that was really cool to have you guys um, on. Um, I'm super excited for Nats. I hope that uh, everyone else is. I hope that we answered your question. Uh, you can look forward to Cody's deck report. Cody, Cody where's your deck report going up? Or your, your, your uh, I still gotta, turn I report? I still got to... In my notes on my phone, I still got to type it up. Okay. It. Do, do you know where it's going? I'm probably going to send it over to Meta Potion. Cool. All right. So so definitely look gonna... out there for it. Um, and what about Adam? Are you going to write up something? Or are you going to do a podcast about it? Uh, we're actually recording. So we have a local tonight, and we're recording our podcast after that. So it should be uh, probably tomorrow. Awesome. All right. So check out Meta Potion for Cody's article, and then look at the RVA's uh, park- podcast for um, Adam's term report. Um, thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, anytime. Yep. Yeah, thanks for having us, bud. Yep. All right, take care, guys. Take care.